<clears throat> well, here I am, folks, and Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. We're going to back up. We've been in Jeremiah chapter 10 for a few of these excerpts. We're going to back up to chapter 8. And we're going to look at a picture of Israel back in her day when she shined with the glory of God and then she backslid. The whole nation backslid. Speaking of the people, the people backslid in, in Israel. And the United States of America, we are living right now in a total, totally upside down, spiritually speaking, in the matter that we have backslid. We were founded by our founding fathers came from different countries and came for religious freedom. Came that this, by, if you please, the United States was started with the first Christian church on the shores of the United States of America. When they came here, the, the people that came here came here with Bibles. Their Bibles were their workbooks. They lived by the Bible, they prayed by the Bible, they ate by the Bible, they sowed seed by the Bible. They worked by what the Bible said. They stayed away from the sin part that God said what was sin in the Bible. They stayed away from that. God said one man and one woman are to have children. And that is it. And that's the way it was supposed to be. There was a group that came along <coughs> and it said, a man could have as many wives and many children as he want. That is not godly. That is opposite from what the Holy Bible of God says. That is opposite. Therefore, that group of people are in total rebellion against the Lord God of heaven. And are not, by the way, on their way to the heaven that God created for his people. In order to go to the heaven that God created, you must follow the words that God said for man to follow. Now in Jeremiah, he sent this poor man Jeremiah out and he told him, he said, he said wow, this is awful. I don't know if you can handle it. I don't know if I can handle it. He said, Jeremiah, you're going to go out and you're going to speak to the people and they're going to spit on you and throw rocks at you and they're not going to like anything you say and they're not going to agree with you and they're not going to like you. Now Jeremiah did have a group of people that did like and did follow him and uh, it's you have to really pick it out you got to really study Jeremiah to find it but it's there and he had a group that followed the God of heaven that Jeremiah had won to it now verse 4 said moreover shall say unto them this is the Lord telling Jeremiah what he's gonna say unto Judah about 12 of the sins that God had picked out and said, I'm going to list these 12 sins and you, you need to do something about them. And thus saith the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? This is exactly where Today, the United States of America is, has been backsliding for years, and we, we have gone now to a perpetual backsliding. In other words, it has got so normal for the abnormal, so normal for sin, to people to sin, and so normal for people to live in degradation that the backsliding is almost where it won't return. It's like perpetual. I don't know if you've ever knocked a glass down before or something and it start rolling back and forth and it just continue to do that for hour after hour after hour and that's perpetual motion. And that's what we're in today in the United States but we are in perpetual motion, backsliding. Said they hold fast deceit, they refuse to return. We have in the United States of America today the most deceitful people in our leadership, in our government. We have the most deceitful people in the world. 
they would lie at the drop of a hat and they'll drop the hat to keep their lucrative jobs, to keep their lucrative, sinful life. If you please, most of those people up in the big house that uh, go out after a day's talking and they go out and to find the nightlife, degraded nightlife that they live opposite from God and spend all of their wealth on pleasing their flesh. And God said, I'm going to have to, one of these days, come and deal with these folks. And he's already dealing with many of them. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back? I visit, I have a visitation program that I visit. I visit people. I visit some people who have served the Lord greatly and they're in a sense of the word a reproachable place to a person who can get around good and do good. But on the other hand, two of those folks I visit, I can tell you right now, serve the Lord where they are and serve Him properly. They run up and down the halls of the nursing home and herald the Word of God and herald God and talk about the Lord. And God may have them there as missionaries for that reason. And But then there are those others that curse God because of their position. They need to realize that if God's even got them alive there and they're getting three meals a day in a warm bed, somebody to take care of them, that they need to realize that God is on the scene and he's the one doing the good. If they have any good, it's from God. He said, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of the wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course, as the horse returneth, uh, rusheth unto the battle. Yea, the stalk in the heaven knows her appointed time, and the turtle, and the crane, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. If you, you read the Bible, if you read the Bible positive, if you read that verse I just read, and see what that verse says. It said the stalk in the heaven knows his appointed time. He knows how long he's going to live. He knows uh, where he is. He knows his appointed time. He said the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. They observe it and they do. Listen, the animals have not strain, strayed from what they're supposed to do and be. But man has. Man is the only thing on the earth that has gone against God and and look, God feeds the birds every day. He feeds all the birds in the world. Somebody said they calculated 100 train car loads of bird seed would not feed all the birds for one day on the earth. Not one day. So that means that God feeds over 100 train car loads a day of food to the birds on this earth and it doesn't trouble him one bit. It doesn't hurt his pocketbook. It doesn't hurt his pocket. It doesn't bother him a bit. And he takes care of all of those people that are his. If you'll study David a little bit, King David in the Bible, you'll find out if you'll study Solomon in the Bible. Did you know that every time Solomon ate a meal, if he had 900 wives and 300 concubines, that's 1,300 women that ate three meals a day? at his table. 1,300 women eating three meals a day, not counting. He had thousands of other people that ate meals on him every day. So every time that Solomon sat down to eat, there was a, a few thousand, several thousand people eating at the same time on his nickel, on what he had. He's furnishing the meal, furnishing all the animals. Can you imagine 6,000 people, how many cows they'll eat in one day? Uh, how much food Solomon had to put before the people to feed all the people that he housed and handled in his day. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how many butchers, how many bakers? Can you imagine how many maid servants, how many manservants? 
And you imagine what he had to have on a daily basis to run his little kingdom that he ran for a few years. And he did it in a, on the earth in an earthly sense. And here God is running the whole world, feeding the whole world. Every time the world eats, God sets the table. Every time the world eats, God sets the table. Did you ever think about that? Hey, you can plant a seed, but that seed won't grow without God making it grow. He's got to bless that seed in order for it to grow, otherwise it won't grow. God can curse the seed in a heartbeat. You, you remember in Jonah where he made the gourd grow up quickly and then cut it down. And, and God's the one that does the blessing. We have cut ourselves off from blessing in this United States, and we're going to see a dearth. The United States is going to see a famine. The United States is going to see a famine. There is no way around it. Because we have rejected God, rejected God, and rejected God, and we're going to see a famine because of it. And until we, and unless we do some repenting and turn around, that you're going to see some starvation right here in this United States. Hey, we haven't had a war on our shores yet, other than the Civil War and the Spanish Mexican War, but we haven't had a real war here. Like, like the wars that they're having overseas today, where somebody drops bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb on a daily basis on an area, and there is no shelter, and there's no way to get food, there's no way, there is no work, there's no way to go to work, there's no nothing. We haven't had that. Listen, we're headed toward it. You better mark my words, we're headed toward that in the United States of America. How do you say, we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made it. The pen of the scribe is in vain. The pens of the scribes making the laws for the United States of America today are in vain. They are in vain because they are made by heathen people and they're heathen laws and they're not law, the law of God. The law of God is what counts. It says, The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed, and take low. They have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is to them. They've rejected the wisdom of the Lord. They've rejected what the Bible said. They've rejected it. Can a man afford not to serve God? Absolutely not. He cannot afford to not serve God. He better find his find the Lord God of heaven and get to serving him is what he better find. Jesus said in uh, John 3 and 16, God said and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that life comes through the Son of God. And once you get that, then you need to get in the book and start learning what the book says, how to live, and how to do. You can't afford not to do that. He said, therefore, look at this. Will I give their wives unto others? Man, we see that today. We see that today. We, I can see it every single day of the week. I see somebody's wife given to another man, going to another man. They're giving their wives to others. And their fields to them that shall... Uh, Bend them. Hey, I see houses, people losing their houses in foreclosure today, every day, day after day after day. By the hundreds, they're losing their houses in foreclosure. They're losing their fields. The, even the fields that they inherited are being taken away. It says, for every one, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness and to profit even unto the even the priests of today, or those that are preachers in the pulpit, have given themselves to big diamond rings and big chains and necklaces and crosses and big hundred million dollar mansions. And these are people preaching on TV and people gathering up money from other people and they taking it for their own self. Hey, we have come to a bad day. 
It said, for they have, that they have healed the hurt of the daughters of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. These people are hurting other people. They're saying, hey, <coughs> you send me that $10 and, and it'll multiply you. It won't either. That guy will have 10 more dollars he can throw away and you'll have to be $10 lighter. Tithing is the way God set up for a man. Tithing to the local church, the group that he goes to visit on Sunday and on Wednesday night and during the week and the people he fellowships with. Tithing is to pay the light bill there in that building, not to send to some TV preacher. Hey, I can't get on these subjects because these subjects, they're all backslidden subjects. These are subjects that are all gone. Uh, they are passed away. There are a few churches still out here doing the proper thing that are not in a cooperate program where all the money goes into even people, goes to people even that do not believe there is a hell, do not believe in God, do not believe the things that this Bible says. We cannot afford not to serve the true God of heaven. You need to get in the Bible and find the true God of heaven. My time's come and gone. I must go. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word.